Welcome, Project Bramble, episode 8, part 2. Boom, for coming in. New Cortinas, new Ford Cortinas. Weekend in October the 2nd, 1976. Wider track, five bearing multi point crank, limited slip diff, new Cortinas, episode 8! Technical stuff. It's, it's good to know how your car works. If you're really into your Cortinas and you want to know every everything about them, so that when you're driving it, you know exactly how things are working. And that's why I'm into this kind of stuff. I just find it really interesting. It's been good fun just to take this to pieces. I think you know, we did the best we could there. We saved that. Yeah, I mean I've saved this. It's not dented or damaged any of it, but it is could be repaired because we fit two new scuttle ends to that, and then a, a piece that could be grafted in there off off uh, this donor section that I've got, so I can make that into a, sc a new scuttle. So that's a good little piece to keep and save. We'll make that into a nice new piece. Easy to get that fixed. Just uh, cut and shut there. So good that we've saved that. Right, I'm going to go and uh, continue on cleaning up. It's got it's reached uh, eight o'clock in the evening, so I'm going to call it a day. And tomorrow we'll see me continuing and, and pulling this section out and to then begin to refurbish it and rebuild it. It's going to need quite a few bits of metal introducing into this end and shaping. We're going to try and extract it out without distorting it, so that when we do fix it up, it slots nicely back in to the bulkhead. Okay, over and out for now. See you tomorrow. Right, here we are with our first template overlay cardboard there. Just clipped at the top for the windscreen piece. That's a relatively easy piece. This piece is dead easy. Quite easy where it wraps over the A-pillar. You can see what they're doing. The whole point of this shape here was so that if you're inside here in the engine bay looking up, you've got a kind of square box shape closing off this area so you can't get your fingers underneath it so it's basically to close it out and stop water draining into this bit and air and also if the engine fume if you had fumes coming in off your car they're going to go up here and they're going to find a way into the box so this creates a completely isolated chamber away from the engine bay as well so you don't you want this closed off so this has to be really hematically sealed that is so that no air can get in. I think they're hermetically sealed. Yeah, that's not water, is it? Or both, anyway. IP65 for this one, I think. So, what I've done, I laid the cardboard over. It'll be cut slightly oversized because when I push in, it'll draw that down. So, but this is just the first mock up. Give us an idea of the kind of shape of metal. We want to try and just cut one piece, really, if we can. And I think we can do that by making the right slits in the sheet when we cut it quite easy to form a lip there that's not too bad quite easy to form a vertical here just by pushing down and then it bottoms out to the base so that's a nice gentle slope and then that just slowly ramps up so that you you've got a nice ramp down creating a closing nice closing square shape inside let's get you in you can see that it's rotted away on that face we're gonna have a new face here so that's the whole point of this so we want some nice neat square lines on that bit here we'll just butt weld it back into the original panel we want to go into this aperture as i said and then we'll cut a circle out the last minute circles underneath so i'm going to cut that piece oversized then make these slits and then we're going to form it and see how we can get it it's actually when you think about it it isn't that complicated at all really um it's just making the pressings but we're going to do that with the oxy flame so we're going to heat up and we're going to, there's just enough strength, that's a little bit weak. So I'll preform that right angle, so I'm not hammering this piece. But there's enough to hammer down onto that basin. And we can get that shape there, you can see what they've done. So that cardboard gives us the metal that we need. This is dead easy, we just whack that round. You'll be able to hammer that red hot and make that shape there, so that's not a problem. It was all about getting the template cut the right size. 
and there's some slit so really we need to make it so that we overcut it then put the slits in them by the time we push it in they'll still be metal in that if I don't do that bit right then I'll put a fillet in there to fill the fill the gap that isn't too bad we can put some it would look neater without them but we may have to just put fillets in let's see how it works it's not the end of the world if we have to put fillets in let's try this now it's there's nothing else I can do because I can't get this panel we've got the fact that it's hidden on our side but we want to know everything's right I'm not talking about short cutting or botches but what I am talking about is keeping the progress going and everything's a trade-off it's a trade-off between progress and OCD-ness and concourse this kind of job here if it wasn't concourse but it was neat waterproof and maybe even an improvement that doesn't bother me uh, stuff detailing the engine bay and, and exterior styling and all that kind of stuff does but something like this if I think it's a good manufactured piece and it's just the fact that a few profiles are different but the actual net result is the same ie it diverts water air the right way and it doesn't let things drip into the car then that's that's accepts my that ticks my box if I wasn't if I were to allow something like this to hold me up and say no I'm, I'm stopping at nothing but new old stock panels I'm stopping stopping at nothing but this I'm exactly formed then I would not get through this car first I wouldn't want to do it and secondly you wouldn't do it within a time scale I'd be too old by the time it's finished it's not happening I don't do things that way we're looking for clean tidy functional factory inspired fa factory what they would have done but they didn't do in other words you know this kind of panel slightly different shape just to keep me moving to keep me motivated to keep me interested this is the kind of level that you'll see me go to and then I won't go beyond that for the reasons of actual the, the actual ultimate goal the ultimate goal is to get the car on the road within a reasonable time scale and I'm talking about reasonable being a couple of years so that you can enjoy it and so that you can keep content coming and so that you can see progress being made you wouldn't want all my videos just to be about this area we want to get this done out of the way and move on and it's not what we want to do that's the kind of reasoning I have but I do want to do I don't want to do any any botch work so they're the reasons that's my explanation about it I'm going to take this off and mark it up on some sheet I'm working in mess which I don't normally do but that's because it's just completely got out of hand and it does very quickly and I, find, I think that if I break to clean up now I'm going to lose my momentum I find with a job like this that it's completely unplanned and I'm do, doing it on the floor the side of the road basically which I, I'm happy squatting by the way I'm comfortable on the floor I don't need a bench it hurts me back this is good I don't get any backache doing it this way but what I'm saying is this is that you don't want the video lingering on this too long okay so for that reason let's move and uh, let's get that metal cut out We're lined up, clamped up, stamped up and ready to rock. So clamping up the top, this will start to curl upwards. Hopefully I've put a little edge on it now to continue that edge. We're now going to mark using this 
we're going to mark some score lines so when I whack it it's going to try and help and hit those score lines as well to keep the shape. It's going to take some persuasion but we're confident it's going to go in okay. Here we go. Well guys and girls that's about it after a bit of hammering bashing a couple little things to do but have a look and see, see what you reckon hand formed still warm so we've knocked it into shape on the anvil for a bit more shape there's just one little hole can you see here bump boom I can fill it with braise that's what I'm going to do braise that corner so we have ground through it a bit but it's got the definition once that's cleaned up a little bit more, you're not going to know. Boom. So we fit that in there. Like that. And boom, in that goes. All lined up, ready to take the water away. Lined up to go up to that. And that's on its outer limits there, look. That's it spinning out, it's just about salvageable. We could continue if we wanted right up to that point I guess but uh, I think we're all right there so all the profiles in nicely fixed colours follow that line remember that line that line to that line across there so that fits how it should well for a first attempt we're going to get on and do the other side, the joys of the artistic process, creative editing. Yeah, 
looks better from the outside. It looks like a almost, almost would be fooled. Not bad. Okay, it's gonna work. So I think we got away with that. Let's do the other side. Okay, you lucky time warpers. This plenty of braise went on this. I wanted to do because this really does catch water. So this side's done. It's exactly the same principle that we did that side. Uh, that's the mould. Here's some of the moulds with the profile cuts. Anyway, suffice to say that this falls in. Watch. Ooh. Right, so obviously that gold makes it puts takes your eye off. It was all sound, back, all ground back, all one colour. It actually looks like a nice pan, but this has got like a deep edge to it here. So we had to, I put an infill piece on that one, then brought it to a taper at the front. So that's waterproof as well. Again, a big water trap. Look, going down into that drain hole. So that one's shot. So we needed to do it. Slot in. Once we butt weld in here. And that's all shot blasted back. I bet you can hardly tell them panels are there. And they are not affecting the function. The, the functionality of this panel is it's not altered. And it's going to be watertight. You'll see what I mean about the finish inside the engine bay. It applies on both sides, but more the other side. This side, not as much. But you'll see that that tapers away. So we needed to have a face edge which you get there, look, here's the facing edge. We'll get that inside. So if you were look in the car and peer up there, it looks finished. Over to this side then we go. I'll show you what I mean. This the facing piece now is all shot up, see? So you're talking about in, when you're looking inside your car, you would be looking in this area. And that's that's what you're gonna see. So when this lands, this can be taken off now. This will recreate. There you go. Obviously, we'll have a nice finish. This won't be on, and you're going to see that piece. And that's landing on the spot weld point as well. I can feel it bottoming out. So we've, got, we've got the height to reach the spots to to anchor that down. So you're going to see pretty seamless continuation of this inside. So we're good there. So we really have achieved what we wanted. It took about three hours to do maybe two hours and 15 this side and uh, an hour and 15 the other side so we've done it and like i said when oh we've got the hole to cut out sorry we've got that hole to cut i'll do that now and then i'll finish off for you so you can see it with that hole because we're going to try and get a little recessed edge into the hole as well so i'll just do that i knew there's something else here we go hole to cut Okay, well, a little bit of. It's easier than you think actually to create a nice rolled lip to your circle. Just a ball pane hammer around the anvil, and you're good to go. So, there we are. Just to get that, just you just need a little bit of a. I use this little mini anvil here. Just a. I don't know where it's from, but I don't know what that is. I've had it for years. And just uh, carefully position this and hammer around with a ball pane. Gives you that. We're in line with that circle. Actually fits right into the circle. What we did, I just made a little, this little trick, a standoff with some paint on it, wedged it in there, and then pressed the panel of the paint which is on the edge, it marked the centre of the circle almost exactly. It is if you look, it is exact. So that completes that panel, just maybe a bit of braise. Should we have a look about our braise possibility? Just in these little corners, we'll run some braise over that. We don't need to finish the braise off this side, but 
bear in mind we've got to plug weld this so we don't get braised around where we're going to be plug welding onto that base there not this base but that one the new bulkhead so that's not too bad quite enjoyed that over and out for this little section tomorrow we'll take this panel off clean it up here we go this one was a little bit harder it's got more shape to it than, than that side in terms of this inner lip which we had to make but we got it in the end it fits in quite nice that lip there I did it like a ribbon of a separate strip of steel went vertical tacked it and lost the tacks and infilled with braze for this one that's nice and waterproof I've checked it with a torch can't see any pinholes in that fits in nice and it actually goes on the car as well I mean this isn't this is just completely just into the car you can see where it fits like that so how about that so both pieces are now done say that one was a little bit trickier but we got there looks like a cyberman <laughs> wear a mask for a mask for little Jim little newt it looks like a cyberman let me just get a bit more oxygen ah oh, please oh mmm pure oh pure oxygen Right, so with the panels made, okay, ready to go into stock. I've stuck the bulkhead over here, come with me, come on in. The bulkhead's here, getting cleaned up and ready. So we'll try and make it real nice. It's got different heater brackets because it's off a facelift. The uh, demisting vents, the windscreen vents, are angled slightly differently, the way that they uh, land behind the, the dash and the, the bulkhead. So we've got to alter the brackets. We've also got to alter the angle of the fixing bracket here for the the air distribution box. There's a few things to remember to do on that, but essentially they're just mind the jobs. So what we want to do really is offer it up to the, the car and get it sitting on this lip. See this top lip here? Now whilst that's being removed and taken away, because we've got the new one under there, we still need to use that as the actual datum point. We want to make sure that the bulkhead lands straight so to do that i need to get the rest of the bulkhead out which means drilling along here and getting that uh, hinge bracket for the bonnet out totally moving all this we've also got to bring the dash face to the top lip of the bulkhead as well because it wet its spot welds on and if we fit this panel here that we were repairing it's going to get in the way of the welds which hold the dash top on I've got a couple of dash tops to pick from the original one seems okay there is a pinhole in it there but there's no reason why we can't use this one but we want to get spot welds on it do it properly to the bulkhead so the bulkhead will come up here and land just on that but if I have that closing panel in that you saw us making the ends for it gets in the way of this so really what we need to do offer the bulkhead up and then when we're happy with all the alignment double check everything then perhaps spot weld on the dash top then remove the dash top fixing points from here and bring it all out as one unit while we carry on building up that bulkhead panel because Ford supplied that dashboard top this this is pre facelift connected to the bulkhead as one complete sub assembly whenever you see one listed new old stock which ain't very often but it does happen there was a left hand drive one on eBay and it shows that and indeed the one I saw at Express Panels shows that top connected already as one sub assembly so we need to replicate that setup get that spot welded on line everything up check everything obviously remove this metal at the front here the old bulkhead metal using our old floor as a proper factory datum point I don't want to be replacing that floor first because then you've lost two items of data you've lost the top fixing point and you've lost the bottom fixing point you should always get it where they overlap where you've still got one in position while you connect your next panel otherwise you can run out of control uh, that's just that's just one of my theories so I'm going to carry on drilling along here got the torch on there so I can pick out them spot welds you'll see them bringing in bringing you in now I just rubbed those with my finger and they come up 
So I'll carry on with that, get that out, we'll lift that out. There's quite a bit to do to get that out because there's all loads of mess around the other side here. Look at all this mess to dig out. We've got to get all that out so we can get a clean landing position for the bulkhead. Then we can drop it in place, just see how it lands against this. All right, that's, that's the job. Next on, see what we can do. Here we go. got to keep this panel in good order we need it as a pattern spot welds on this one a little bit tricky to find just about seeing what I've done if you buff up with a cloth that'll give you a bit of a help some spot welds are tough to find and you've just got to look for clues it's a bit Sherlock Holmes uh, you're just looking for shadows and imprints just so slightly look for the combination of a a recess with your finger and then a shadow sometimes them shadows can be rust pits but if you combine it with the fact that it's dented usually that gives you the clue that you need so I'm, I'm gonna go for these ones that I can see now just in the shadow of my torch I'm thinking that they're here but it's tough, uh, it's tough to track this down these spot welds are pretty elusive along this this panel here we're off at the bottom no problem Thank you very much and good night. No distortion on that. So we just need to keep going on this, get this off. We're going to have to really, that's going to be tricky that to plug weld that later. There's that many holes in it. That's the only downside. We could do with actually grafting in a new straight piece of metal to that. That's probably what we'll do. Um, but we need this shape at the top. Got to recreate that. We've got to repair this. Most of this is salvageable. It's in quite good order this piece, but the metal here is pitted, so we're gonna we're gonna butt weld that square shape and do a rolled edge on it. Won't be too hard to make that piece, but the main thing is to get it off intact and try and find these hidden spot welds. I've got my torch, cloth, looking for shadows there. I can see a few more here, so we're gonna go for those and try and get that drilled off. Okay, okay, with this bonnet hinge plate removed, leaving a pretty good A panel top. Nice, still solid there, so we're good there. I like that. Now we've got to get the rest of the bulkhead out. The remaining run is along the spot welds at the front. And then on the inside, you can see where we drilled through that area there was the inner 
mounting plate for that bonnet hinge bracket so it's triple welded through there or double through we're now on the A panel then a continuous arc of welds up and then that's it along that front so probably about 30 or 40 30 to get off and we should be able to extract the remains of that old knackered bulkhead going to do that we're going to pilot these out ready for a whole cutting bit a bit of WD just helps keep the blade from overheating so a lot of welds and we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 40, something like that to do. And then pull this out, it's not connected up here. Look at a mess up here, look at this. Wow. We better get busy boys. We better we better get busy. Just feel it. There it is. Feel it. Almost rusted a little bit. Three more to go, guys. Quite easy to see here. Sorry about the shakiness. Mag mounts on the same panel I'm drilling, sorry. gotta be done I'll save you the pain I've only got one battery on my drill bit on my drill it's gone flat had a good run though a couple of hundred spot welds so let's wait for it to charge up and in the meantime why not clean this so you can see the remnants of the panels that we made the copies of here they are and how they fitted bits of them left there but we don't need to worry about those clean this off Get that braze off there, there's some factory braze you can see. You can see that that inner panel that we made the repair panel ends was braze finished at the top of here and then the scuttle panel itself braze finished there so we need to bear that into, mi into mind. Let's grind flat. Down here we go, clean that up, get some metal welded into here, see what it shapes up like.
Wow, okay, definitely big time, guys and girls. It is big time. So I've made these ground back the roughest of the metal, made them squares just so I can cut squares. The rest I've punched through. We have the, the die grinder on this. I'll show you which tip we use to put the die grinder on. Just blowing them out like that so it feels solid. Looking for any others. We'll fill the rest with braise. But we need to get some little squares minked into this now. Little hole there. Other than that, it's not a bad shape actually that. So we'll get plenty of mig and then we'll just put some braising on the on those craters and clean that up a little bit. So it's mig time now, here's our mig ready to go. We're gonna get tin snips, aviation snips, cut two squares. We'll probably just get the mig to fill that hole. Away we go then for the uh, it is the near side A pillar bottom repair near side. Going good, all ready to get the bulkhead out. The drill is charging up so we can carry on with that job. It's already starting to break away, I can see it with the vibration. So looking good, I'm quite enjoying this. Okay, apart from that little square there, which is above where I'm repairing at the moment, uh, the metal's all in, but what I've done, there's little craters and pit holes, it didn't need to be done, because you kind of like hidden under the scuttle, but I just went over it anyway, put a bit more MIG in the little craters, we'll bring them off now, heads off them and that's it, we're solid there, little square piece to go in there, um, take note as well, early cars, had a different shape A pillar so if you had the wide chrome you'd have this little imprint in your A pillar look at that it's a slightly different shape there well not a lot of people know that little thing okay I'm gonna just use the finger sand the croc sand there crocky 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 we'll just crock the heads off those easy with that for these instances looking good there ready to pull this bulkhead the drill should have charged up by now so let's get on to that Okay, nice and clean. Straight out for that bulkhead piece. One little stubborn one just in the corner. Chisel on that and it was gone. It was good night. So, a straight edge there. We can now place our bulkhead, our, our new bulkhead or refurbing one that we're refurbing straight into here and then start to get an idea about lining it up with a dash. So a nice clear space, nice and neat, no distortion on any of the panels. That gives us the reference points that we're going to need to make sure we keep everything within tolerance. That A pillar, as you just saw, nice and clean now and ready. Just there, that off side, near side A pillar, sorry. Uh, right, bulkhead mock up now, see how it fits. Okay, with a lot of the hard work done, a lot of spot welds to take out there, we were lucky because only one really got in the way. I'm quite pleased and that was just a poof a one two buckle my shoe and now I'm very happy <clears throat> because it's come out clean and you've seen us prepping the bulkhead putting all those new edges on it and lining it up and doing all that now we're going to just 
see how it fits in. We want to be paying particular attention to the dashboard. You can see the dashboard going across there, that crescent shape. That's got to line up nicely with the lip now. We can spot weld in. If we don't do that now, and we put the scuttle on, you cannot spot weld dash plate on. There'll be a lot of plug welds and hard to get in and clean and inside the car you're, gonna, you're not going to see a nice spot welded lip, which is what you want. You'll be looking right at it, so it's got to look good. I'll grab the bulkhead. Wish me luck. Continuous take, I'm just going to go and grab it. Here we go. I'm going to try and, we've got to try and just get it to land as the car's not going just the dash might get in the way a little bit. Try and lift the dash, clear it. Ooh. A little bit of jiggly pokery, but oh, come on. Oh, did you hear that? Whoa. Ah, and that's what I'm talking about. Oops, stuff all over the floor. I've got to clean this place up. I'm going to bring you in right in. You don't even need to stop. Woo! Whoa, yeah. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. Uh, right, episode. I thought we were still in episode eight. Hope so. Okay, continuous take. Sorry about the, the shake around. Now then. We did all that lip, it's paid off, it's dropped straight in and look how nice and straight and clean that edge looks. Whoa, wow, that's incredible, that's fantastic. What a nice, beautiful, polished straight edge line, doesn't look that lo lovely. That is fantastic, I'm loving that. That is so cool. Round here and look. Dashboard just meets it perfectly. Perfect following curve. Oops, hit the fucking e pillar. Sorry, whoops. It's paid off. All oh, right, so we've got to just squash it down a bit here. I'll tell your mum about that. It's just that because it's dented there. Look, that'll that'll, that'll go. But what we'll be looking at is, in particular, uh, reference to my repair on that edge. Will it li line up with all the holes here? A boom 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 look all the holes that we drilled lined straight up with my nice lovely new edge now so now you can see why we made that lovely edge imagine if it, that was that crusty metal you just wouldn't get those lovely we're going to put some really nice plug plug welds in there and if that was all that crusty rubbish you just wouldn't get that confident weld through this is going to be a real nice solid join onto the a-pillar for strength and then we come in here like this fits onto that landing bracket all right you've got a gap here but that's someone's chopped that out and cut that clean so you can see the width goes down that's not a problem we'll make a fillet piece for that so that's just to do with them extracting it out of the car i hope that wasn't me and then along this run sits nicely just sits right exactly where the other one came out so it's 100 percent confidence in this Beautiful, and look in that corner over there, it doesn't even look like it's been out, it's so flush fitted. Look at this, if I zoom you in, you'll see the flush fitness. That's the inner edge of the panel going up to that A panel. Just no warping, it's not uh, bulging out, it's not trying to push it out. Hold on, because I've got the red, because I've got the red welding gloves on, I can't operate the zoom control. Here we are. So, a success. Very pleased with that. We're now over the hill, and you now start to go on the home run, which, um, in terms of the bulkhead anyway, look at the difference it makes. Just look at the difference. Oh, this is going to be a beautiful engine bay. Guys, it's going to be so solid. Guys and girls, sorry. Uh, it's going to be so solid, so solid crew. That balances on, and 
the wings are on just think we've pushed we're nearly we're nearly up to this stage look is that exciting look at the time frame you go back on your vids if you're a new youtuber just joined us in eight thank you and welcome aboard pete c cortina city skip back through the films get to episode one if you want to see this or have a look for uh, rescuing an abandoned car where you see this getting pulled out of the the field in tewkesbury left there since 1982. um yeah great a lot of people are asking why was it left there this car and um, by the way if you're just wondering which car it is this is called bramble this is the yellow it was a yellow car but it was originally silver when it was made at the factory they painted it yellow silver uh, was a faulty color by ford and it peeled off so they, they recalled a lot of cars or this did have a crash and they could have painted it then but this car is called uh, ruby bramble god i'm gonna get it right one day this is project bramble and it was left there because the farmer passed it on to his wife his wife didn't like it and parked it up said it was a bit too quick I think she was uh, used to 1100 mini before that that's the story i got anyway and she pranged it and said no that's it i'm not i'm not having this no more then parked it up so anyway back to business wow 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 i know you're going to be ex as excited as i am interestingly that gap's also on this side i think that's part of it I'm just going to work out where that joins that because I can't remember. It might be to do with that. Oh no, it's because of these end pieces, our repair pieces. Sorry, there's no problem. Uh, panic over. We're good. I like the way the dash just just lands back exactly in place. I like the way that it looks inside here. It's just sitting really nicely on that top piece. Now I know that top piece. Sorry, that top piece of the bottom piece. That's the bit over the transmission tool it's sitting nicely on that that's being re removed of course because we've rebuilt a new new one however it fits so this is what we wanted to make sure so we can now start to secure our top panel and get some ideas about where things are fitting so a great achievement really happy with that we may be coming to an end of episode eight now in which case we'll be winding it down and i'll thank everybody for YouTube and Patreon support, as you as you saw us uh, salvaging a bulkhead and then getting it to trial fit. So for part nine, we'll be showing you more assembly work on that bulkhead. Really looking forward to that. So I think we can leave on a really good note on this episode. Just drop straight in, and I do like the way it follows nice and flush along those inner A-panel uppers. You can have such a combination of, of adjectives. Okay. Is that right? Adjectives? I think so. Oh my god, I forgot what's a reflex verb. See you in episode nine. Over and out, Cortina City. Hope you enjoyed this part. We leave you. Good night. Right, carrying on, just cleaning up the edges to receive that new panel, that lower bulkhead. Gloves will be on in a sec, so goodbye to that, clean that up. i have to make a new edge here, that's a bit rough. I'll get a new piece of metal in that, get it folded and put in. Best to have a nice clean piece there. So I'll do that, but we're going to have a little break now, because we've been on it hardcore. We've got, a, we've got somebody in again today, I know you've been asking where he's been. He's back. Sean's back. He always, I always give him the shitty jobs. Sorry, mate. Well, if you don't mind a bit of cleaning, do you? Matt. Right, so he's all right. But we've dug out some photographs. And we're going uh, to have a little break. And Sean and me are on these pictures. We're going back to the 80s, so we're going to have a little, a little trip down memory lane. Because we're sticking a bit more value for cash. Bang, for your book into the films. Just to break it up a little bit because you've been so good on YouTube with all your comments and that and we've gone really busy recently so I just feel very happy about it and uh, I'll step back so you can see the car we're rocking there okay it's just like a big hole in it not much there lah. right let's get the Lancashire accents going and uh, we'll talk through these photos here we go Sean's on camera now it's flipping across Okay, 
Tell us when it's rolling. It's rolling. Right, Sean's filming. Let's have a look at these pickies. Now, you've just seen Sean, but... <laughs> Fucking hell, that's with me with her. Uh... <laughs> Sean, I'm just passing it to Sean. <laughs> Now, what, There's me with it. What car is it? That's Mark's Cortina, Mark III. What do you know? Oh, is it? Yes, it's the Mark III. Is it, is oh, is it, it the... Uh, it's the XL. It's the Mark III XL. Hello, Sean. Could be the... Uh, the estate. No. No. No, because it's orange. I've got other pictures of it later on. I'll have to take a photo. How old was you on that? I don't know. I'll have to a photograph of that. Everyone, I, think every, I think that's 88. Everyone's going to have a laugh at that when they see me. Watch the swearing because we're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> They're all going to have a laugh at work with that with me. 88, 1988 or 87, it's got to be, could even be 86. Um, I just... I no, mean, it'll be... It, it's, it's, it's when you do the celery run. That'll be early 90s. Right, okay. Early 90s, right, it's fine. So you'd have been... Well, how old are you now? 47. Mm, early so 8, 89, 90. Oh, I thought it was 28 years ago. Yeah. So you'd have been 20, 19 or 20 there. And then, do you remember that one? Oh yeah, I remember that one. 1100 Fiesta van. Yeah, we had it there. Trailer on the Trailer back. on the back with the machines. Going through the Mersey tool, the pinball machine in the back. <laughs> what about that one? Mark II Escort two. No, that was before. You were before that was time. before my time. June eighty nine. I crashed it, and I took this picture when I crashed it. Crashed it into a tree, and the headlights shot out. They were that rusty that when they hit the tree, but it popped both headlights, and the headlights shot off. Uh, Mark II eleven hundred popular. Uh, see if you can see. Let us know when it fills the screen. Or don't move the camera. Just keep it still. Yeah, it's in. You can see it. Got it. Just so I know how far to put it. Um, right, this is dated October 89. That's the, when we're all into the Escort Mark II vans. You've got Windy Miller's van there. Two of mine are in there. Yeah. That's in Dad's shed. Got him in. We had a, a, yeah. a joinery workshop. That's in the joinery workshop. It closed down. We took over. Yeah. And this one you'll know. Oh, uh, yeah. I've got that got battered. Yeah, did some work. Back quarter. We went spinning. M58. Yeah. Lost it on the fifth. Bullet and rolled it off. We had a back end. We had a, a machine called Pole Position Two. It was a driving game. Good one, made by Atari, I think. I think it was Atari Pole Position Two. That was in the back of the car. No, it weren't. No, we had nothing. I think we were coming back yeah. from the site. We had something in the back because it threw the back out. I remember thinking. No, because it was the van in front. He was waving, and we yeah. were bombing, gassing it, and then. We were going in the outside and inside, and then back end just went out, and we just went spinning down the hill, and then I've definitely lost shunting it. the uh, barry under the bridge, under the bridge. I definitely, I definitely lost it once with a machine in the back. Got that. Eleven hundred popular. Rick Astley haircut there. Keep that camera steady, Sean. Make sure you keep the shot composed. Yeah. We still in the shot there. Yeah. And this is where we thought we're the coolest dudes in the world. Uh, me, thirteen hundred Mark II van. That's me on the me on the right. Peach shirt and uh, armed combat pant type things. And that was in uh, that was in the trough of Boland with my mate Lee Jolly. We put spotlights on at the bumper there. Mark II Escort van. Here's a very early one. Me and my overall stripping down a Mark I Escort estate. That would have been uh, 84, that's 1984, that definitely 84. Got this Escort van and I don't know what's happened to it, it's getting stripped. Another van I got from the scrapyard and drove it straight back, another Mark II 1300. That was, uh, that was 86. And then here's the beauty ACW. And this is dated uh, July 93, so my Mark V Cortina Stratos Silver. And then here's me and Stig doing up the shock absorbers on the Mark III, 1986. Mark III Escort XL. And then, the I just remember this, so I don't know if you know, this was before you. The time Mark put it in a ditch, we pulled it out. I don't remember that one there. Yeah, it's gone in a ditch there, the, the F. The, the car Yeah, into the ditch. But you spent some time in that car, didn't you? Oh, I, yeah. Well, leaving me, yeah, uh, my brother had a 
had stuff in it. Yeah. Did the front end. That's right. <laughs> uh, Dolomite, my brother crashed that into a wall. 1984. Oh, I remember that. Oh no, that was a different one, that one. We'll keep your eye on the screen and make sure it's composed. Yeah. Am I still in it? Yeah. Because we're going to try and get this to look consistent. Um, that's the colour in the ditch. 86. And this is when I borrowed my dad's Grenada 2 litre Gear X and stuffed it. I was like, Dad, I've crashed. I was looking at a nightclub that had just opened in the daytime. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go there at the weekend. This nightclub called uh, Mirage. It was in um, Standish, opposite Henry Africa's in Standish. And I was looking at the sign and I thought, I'll go there, the nightclub, great, yeah. And I uh, wasn't looking where I was going, and the Volkswagen Golf was turning right. I just stuffed straight into the back of it. Got repaired, that was a nice car. My Orion 1.6 injection gear, that's in Scotland. That's Fort William, Scotland, 1988. Wow, what's this one gone? Freddie Mercury. Went to see Queen at Manchester Main Road. Right on the front I was, and uh, Freddie came down onto the lower platforms and we were, everyone, we were brushing everyone's hands. I remember I got a picture of him like right up. Freddie Mercury, Queen, Kind of Magic Tour, 1986, Manchester Main Road. I've got loads of uh, Queen pictures. I've still got the ticket. Still got my gate ticket at Manchester Main Road. Champagne, gold, uh, 1.6 gear Orion and then this is the date I pulled the Mark III Cortina out, it's not dated at the scrapyard at Ben Johnson's straight out of the scrapyard, that's the max, I've still got that car, that's PDM 869L, that's the one that's on top gear uh, Grand Tour, that's the one that James May mm. drives on Grand Tour for, he had that for two days and James May actually clocked the car and had to spend an hour with um, James May in a Wait for it to go dark because they, they needed a night shot and it wasn't quite dark yet. That's coming out in Feb. And then uh, there's you again, Sean, doing our Sweeney when we just got the car. And it's in onyx green. I painted it lighter, I did it in fern, but that was the original paint. Onyx, a bit darker. So that's had a, that's had a few refurbs, that car. So you're, you're making the arrest there. There's me again getting busted, Regan style. Shut it! Listen, I don't care what you do when I'm around, you tell me where the diamonds are. There's you in, in the car, proving it was a Mark III, and it's got Roxy music on the top of the uh, yeah. get up. <laughs> yeah, that's the, what the other one, at FGTH, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, on when he's put it in the ditch that I just noticed. And this one was crazy, bought that as it was, remember that? I remember that in the, you never got around to finishing it off, I think you got rid of it in the end didn't you? Oh yeah, I, was, I mean, them heart windows are about to go, that looks so tacky, look at that, straighten your camera up, that looks so tacky that doesn't it? Because it would have had to be perfect. Do you, know, do you know what, that Mark 1 Escort van, it's got a single piece door, look, it did the whole door hinged up. Because it was going to be, because you're going to have a hydraulic weren't it? Yeah, I did, I put gas shocks on it and made a single piece door. Wow, that's, oh dear, that potential, they look like deep dish rust styles, they do look like deep dish, never made it, but they'd done all like fiberglass work to it and put like big wide arches in it, and it was just down someone's drive for years and I said I loved that and I don't know what I was going to do, I put, I could put a Capri axle on it actually with a limited slip diff but it never got finished. Oh God, there's me with me Ryan, and God knows what I'm wearing there, some kind of sport outfit. Keep that off me, uh, Mark V van, J Reg. Steve's Mark II Escort and me following him on the dual cab. I do van. remember, vaguely remember that, because mm. he used to drive around, he used to sunk, sunk. You know, all you could see was just his head, because he used to sit right back. Yeah, the Grenada and the Sunbeam Talbot on the Moss. Mark one Granada, I think. Yeah, Mark one Granada. With Brucey, with a young Bruce. Mark one Granada, and this is us as a family with a Mark one Transit camper van in France. You can just see the, the wing of the Transit there. And then looking Rick Astley style with a stripy shirt brigade in the 1988 on Southport Beach. 
with my uh, red van now painted black with a silver stripe on it. And then we're back, I think. Yeah, we're back to the, the beginning. Back to the shore. Yeah, that's a little trip down there. So not, that's not all my cars. That's just some of them I grabbed when I was in the house before. Little break, let's get back to work.